What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Malik's Water Garden. Today is going to be a very special video. This is going to be the prelude to the Pleco breeding series for the Zebra Plecos. So we are going to be doing an entire video series of how to breed Zebra Plecos. This is going to be a collaborative effort between myself and Dr. Thomas, uh, who is from Europe. And uh, so he has been kind enough to send us a whole bunch of different information, but this is going to be an email he sent me. He basically typed this up, essentially explaining his experience on what happened and uh, how he ended up losing 27 or 28 of his uh, zebra plecos, which were in a grow out tank, which were in two separate grow out tanks. So I'm basically narrating his uh, entire text. So this video is going to be about what happened in that incident. I highly recommend you watch this video till the end because this is not just about zebra plecos. The information that you are going to learn from this video is going to be valuable for all types of advanced fish keeping. Most of the fish that we are into keeping, uh, most of the people that are subscribed to the channel and stuff, all of us are into keeping the more higher end, advanced and expensive and more harder to take care of species. And this video, it really explains uh, why uh, some of this stuff can be considered hard and uh, also explains some of the things that we can do to eliminate losses in our fish room. So I highly recommend you watch the video till the end and comment below and let me know what other types of things you want to find out about zebra pleco breeding from Thomas so we can ask him those. He has also put together a list of 20 separate points which he will, will elaborate on as well as anything that I can uh, add to, I will add to that and there's things that he has not touched on like how to breed um, wild caught plecos and stuff so that will be things I will be tackling as the video series progresses. So you will be getting a whole wealth of information through this next couple of weeks and uh, months to come. And uh, I highly recommend you subscribe if you haven't and hit that notification icon. So you get up there when these videos as well as many other videos like this get uploaded. And by watching this video series, you will become an expert on how to keep and breed zebra plecos and as well as many other types of hype ancestors and Pecoltia species and many pleco species in general. So without further ado, let's get into this video and watch till the end guys. And uh, thank you so much for watching. So I'm going to read this entire thing first and uh, then uh, I will also interject at some points and uh, explain some of the stuff because he did explain a lot of this stuff to me and uh, so some of it is in point form and uh, so we, I will go through it and then uh, there will be several other videos coming up after it which are going to look at the individual steps on actual breeding and whatnot. Now I uh, highly recommend you subscribe and hit that notification icon so you get updated when those videos as well as many other videos like this get uploaded. Everybody comment below and say thank you so much Thomas for doing this for us because this is really such a wealth of information that he has given us and uh, that is he also willing to give in the next coming few days and weeks uh, in terms of breeding for you guys and once you watch these videos you will become an expert in breeding zebra plecos as well as other hype ancestors. And uh, so it will be really helpful for all of us, including myself. And so I'm really grateful for Thomas. Thank you so much. And uh, without further ado, let's get into this video. I just wanted to share some experiences that I had over the years keeping and trying to breed Hypensis Cerebra. What other breeders learned me, especially concerning L46 Zebra and other Hypensis species. I was triggered by watching the YouTube channel of Malik and I found him somebody who wants to share it with the rest of the Pleco community through his YouTube channel. Recently, I had one of the major problems with my zebra since 2007, which is when he has been keeping his Pleco since. I explained what happened. I had an upgrowing fish tank, 20 gallons, with around 10 high ancestors contradents, 2 to 3 inch long, 10 L66, around 2 weeks old, 7 L129, some uh, Corridora Sturbi, red shrimp, and around 15 zebras in it. So he had a grow out tank, 20 gallons, with all these fish in it, okay? It was kind of overcrowded, but due to good water changes, I never had problems. So I decided to take the 13 L46 out of, the, out of there, putting them together in a through sponge divided tank of 40 gallons, where there was already a group of around 13 zebras, two to three and a half inches, and ready to try and breeding attempt with them. So I'm gonna interject here and explain this bit because he explained this in quite detail. So he took the 13 zebras that was in his grow out tank, which were about two inches long, and he put them into a 40 gallon tank, which is something like this. Uh, and uh, the tank was divided in the middle with a, a sponge, like a, the same kind of idea like the sponges I have here, 
So the sponge is placed in the middle like this. I think there's a video, I will put the video in the B-roll. And uh, so he had one group that was already in the tank. That was 13 fish between two and three and a half inches. So they were on one side. And then he put the new 13 fish, which was the grower group, into the other side. So, you know, they're physically separated, two separate groups, but the water is exchanging now. And uh, they're in this tank. And he's attempting to spawn, okay? Um, and uh, so we're going forward now, reading. A few days later, in the tank where we were all the L66, 129, and conodents, etc., some conodents and L29 died. So a couple of days later. I immediately did a 60% water change with water out of other basins, but still every day some fish died. Okay. But no zebras so far yet. Thank God. After two days in the second basin in the newly added group of L46 started to die at a rate of two to four fish a day. The white of the skin became pink, started to breathe heavily and died. So I'm going to explain, uh, he explained this quite in detail. So after two days from the initial death started occurring in the 20 gallon grow out tank, some of the fish in the newly added group, so the fish that he moved into the new tank started dying. Okay, so the fish that were in the grow out tank that got into the new tank, uh, this is like about two to three days later started to die at a rate of two to four fish per day. So this happened for over quite a few days. And uh, I would be devastated. I feel so bad reading. Like when he told me, I was holding my head essentially. It was pretty scary. Um, so let's keep on reading. I did really did not have any clue. I checked my water parameters, pH 6.2, KH1, no nitrates, and other fish, snails, shrimp were doing fine. Even the zebras who were separated by a sponge started to die one day later. So the fish on this side now started dying. They have never been in any any physical contact between the two groups of L46. So what was going on? pH drop due to water changes with rainwater? I assume so, but at that moment in my other tanks, my L333 were spawning. L260 were trying to spawn. But due to my fear, I started to make water changes with my tap water with the KH of 14. But in the Sibra Basin, the KH stayed low, especially after one day of water change, it had already dropped one point KH three to two. So I started to think about all the breeders I have seen lately. Very often shrimp combined with huge numbers of snails. So I thought it might be the reason for the pH or KH to drop, but it couldn't, couldn't explain why the first deaths occurred in the continents 66 and L2129 tank. So he couldn't explain it, right? All my basins have the same amount of water change due to a common sprinkler drop system. So I'm gonna interject here and say his entire fish room is on an auto water change system. So all the tanks get the same water and on the same water change schedule, okay? So the same amounts of water too. Now, if the pH were to drop, let's say in the Zebra Pleco tank, to an unsafe level, that means the pH in the other tanks would also ideally or you know potentially drop to the same unsafe level. So it can't be that. That's what he was trying to figure out, right? But he did notice that the KH in the Zebra Pleco tank was dropping from three to two or one day after water changes, okay? So I started to think about it. All my basins have the same amount of water change due to the common sprinkler drop system. So pH drop was not the reason for the deaths, but something else. So I contacted some semi-experienced and professional breeders to help me find what was the cause uh, or what the cause was. One said nitrate or ammonia, but I checked nothing abnormal and I and uh, shrimp don't tolerate ammonia or nitrate at all. So that's not it. They told me my pH five is the limit for hype ancestors. So he checked the pH is not obviously below five and that's the limit for hype ancestors. Okay. With the last hope, I put them in a completely different tank where there was no other fish for at least four weeks, 
but filled around four weeks before with already biological water from other tanks. So a mature tank with no fish in it. Okay. Then I called Patrick, very well known, famous, and uh, Pleco breeder, famous on Facebook as Platts Pleco. So you guys know his, this person. I will put the link down here because of his L236. He really is a professional breeder. Link. So YouTube link. Highly recommend checking that out. He immediately told me what, what to do. Doing 80% of water change and add some Bactopore Sera antibiotics. So this is a product that you can buy from Sera. At the moment, I re realized everything because, you know, he, now it all came to uh, Thomas. It was bacterial compatibil compatibility as described by Stanker that made my fish die. So there's a link here from uh, Stanker, uh, Discus, and, uh, and uh, it says uh, basically it's a PDF. So I'll put the link so you guys can check that out. So this is really important, guys. Really Pay attention to this. This is not just for zebra plecos, but this goes to all your other fish. And we talked about quarantine quite de in detail. But uh, Dr. Stanker, uh, on his website, um, uh, he goes into go a lot more detail uh, and uh, on this PDF. So um, Thomas kindly took a, a very important section out of it and, and put it here. So I'm going to read that section. So this is from the PDF that uh, was the link above. Okay. Uh, so this is, uh, so I'll read the whole thing from the beginning of that bit. It says testing bacterial compatibility of fishes and plants to test whether you can safely add new plants or companion fish to your aquarium. It is advisable to use a quarantine aquarium and to place these fish and plants in the quarantine aquarium first. So quarantine your fish first. You should then place one of your discus fish as a test discus in the quarantine aquarium together with the new coming newcomers for one week so after quarantine you take a discus and you put it into your quarantine tank as a test fish as a test discus in the quarantine aquarium together with the new coming fish for one week we strongly advise you to carry out this test procedure before adding any new fish or plants to eliminate the risk of introducing disease to your aquarium really important you will require quarantine aquarium with the following equipment Complete aquarium set with the compa capacity of 60 liters, 15 US gallons, with the heater, filter, thermometer, and aeration stone. See also link quarantine. So there's a link to that on the PDF, so you can check that. Um, if possible, you should use the discus fish, which can change color, becoming darker. So a blue discus is more ideal. As a test fish, i.e. not a pigeon blood discus fish. If a bacterial incompatibility arises, the test discus will generally turn dark in color or the, by the, on the third or fourth day will clamp its fins and will hide in a corner of the aquarium. If this occurs, it is safe to discard. It is safest to discard the entire content of the quarantine aquarium and not to place the fish or plants in your main aquarium. However, if after one week, if everything in the quarantine aquarium looks okay, it is generally safe to place the new plants in companion and companion fish into your main aquarium together with the test discus. Please ensure that no drop of water via damp hands, host, hose, buckets, etc. from the quarantine aquarium gets into your discus aquarium while carrying out this test phase. So Thomas goes into adding note, so not even damp hands can transfer bacteria. So even damp can transfer bacteria, okay? So like a little bit of water even can transfer these bacteria. So you gotta be really, really, really careful. So the last zebra I saved with Patrick's advice. Conclusion, but little of too late. No pH drop, but bacteria compatibility was the case. Cause, what did I learn? So what did I learn? One, when you have zebras or other fishes and you have never mixed them for one year, for four years, Watched out when putting them from to one tank to another, even when you have used always the same water, the same fishing nets, and so on. This made me realize that with my fishing nets, I can transfer bacteria from one basin to another. So I went to my local fish store friend and asked them what they do. This is like really important, this part. Uh, they put a little bit of chlorine in a bucket of water and then they let the nets be disinfected in it. A friend of mine, Aquapole on YouTube, disinfects his nets with hot water, okay? 
my other basins started to spawn so this is very important this is, comes now goes into the breeding part of the video thank you so much everybody that watched the video till the end you guys are all awesome for sticking through until the end and uh, if you found value in this content please give this video a like and comment below and let me know what type of questions you want me to ask Thomas about zebra placo breeding uh, and also subscribe if you haven't and hit that notification icon so you get updated for the rest of this video series gets uploaded as well as many other videos like this as always thank you so much for your love and support i love you all i'll see you on the next video god bless you